Welcome to Martini Time. It's that beautiful happy time of the day when I get to talk to you off the cuff uh, from the center of the world, Blackstone, Virginia. But then you too are at the center of the world. So, I just watched uh, The Darkest Hour. Now that's backwards. <laughs> and I, uh, my daughter gave us a whole bunch of uh, movies from uh, uh, last year, some of the best movies, and uh, uh, yesterday we watched uh, The Shape of Water, and that so got me so pumped up, I was writing on it, gave a talk on it last night, and I've uh, been writing on it all day. Uh, it's been going off inside of me like uh, a time release capsule of insight, and now I've got The Darkest Hour, which was about the Winston Churchill when he found his voice, when he found the will and the voice of the English people in the face of uncertain and an improbable future uh, with Hitler taking over Europe. And this little tiny island is the last refuge for sanity. And he found his voice. So this whole movie was about that moment. Uh, and it's called The Darkest Hour. And I think the, uh, the actor, I uh, can't even say he got best actor, whatever his name was. <laughs> but what I want to talk about is the, uh, the metaphorical meaning of the movie. Now that's, movies are metaphors. Uh, they're stories. But then they're all about something else that points to your heart, that points to your soul, that points to your spirit, that points to you. So all movies are two point are pointing in two different directions. Point to the story, how old was the movie star, and compare it to other movies, and whether it got an award, yada yada yada. But the metaphorical meaning, the deeper meaning, points to you, and points right to your heart. You see. Uh, not to your eyes, but to your heart. And uh, so you feel the movie. You're, you're moved by the movie. You're motivated by the movie. You're inspired by the movie. You are enlightened by the movie. That's the metaphorical meaning. So what's the darkest hour? How does that relate to us? Are we in our darkest hour? Are we encircled by a, a insidious... Uh, force of false equivalence and uh, 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 tyranny disguised as democracy? Are we, are we under attack by some uh, uh, something foreign to American culture and the American democracy? We're in a war right now with two sides, both of them saying we're under attack by some foreign force, you see. The Trump and his minions say we're under attack by the deep state, by the government, by the liberals, by the immigrants. We're under attack. We have to restore America. And on the left, we say, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Who's under attack? Who's the force trying to, trying to uh, kill the spirit of compassion? Who's, what is the force that's trying to destroy the unity of America? What is the force that's trying to exclude people from America? What is the force that's dividing? Where is that, you see? We're used to thinking of, oh, it's the communists, it's the Japanese, it's the Germans. It's some external army or enemy. We can ha we've handled that. But now something is kind of like merged here. You know, like here, the left and the right, and now it's kind of like merged, you see. And which hand is which? <laughs> it's all fingers, well, what finger are you? It, it looks like one hand, but it's two. Something weird is going on, you see. And we have, to, we have to be able to find our voice. We have to be able to find our word 
Find our courage. Find our heart. So maybe this is America's darkest hour. Maybe this is the, what the movie metaphor was pointing to. That each of us has to be Winston Churchill. Each of us has to find our courage, find our voice, and say we will never surrender to a pseudo, to a, a, a faux America, to a pseudo America, uh, one that pretends to be America. So we have to we have to say we'll fight on the beaches, we'll fight on the streets, we'll fight in the cities, we'll fight in the hills. We will never surrender. Because something foreign, something we've never encountered before, something we've never seen before, is creeping into America like a fog with insidious demons hiding in the shadows. We don't understand what's going on, but we feel this creeping, this creeping uh, malevolence disguised as all of us, you see. Who, who, everybody looks, you know. So it's not the ISIS, the bearded Muslim that is the enemy. It's us, it's us, you see. So we have to find our voice, we have to find our American voice. We have to find our American word of inclusion of compassion, of welcoming. That is the light of America. Not the dimming, not the turning out of the light and excluding and dividing and getting our guns and locking the doors and shutting down the blinds and looking at our neighbors suspiciously, you see. That is not the land we want to live in. And so this movie inspired me. You know, when I come here to talk with you, um, I speak my voice. I'm not scripted. You know, I'm, this, is, this is an oral tradition. You know, I don't write this down and then speak it and check it out, you see. Um, this is from the heart, you know. Give or take, right or wrong, you see. And so this movie really really chilled me to the bone because it showed how easy it is to capitulate. Britain was just that far from making peace with her Hitler. The, all the forces of the war cabinet says, oh, our soldiers are at Dunkirk. We're going to lose them. We got to make peace and, and hope Hitler gives us a good deal. Hope Hitler makes a good deal with us. He has the art of the deal. We'll trust that Hitler will make us a good deal. He makes good deals. He won't do anything against his own nature. We'll let Hitler make a deal. It was that close from that. So Winston Churchill, on the verge of giving in because all of his cabinet was against him, all of them wanted to capitulate. So he went on the subway and he talked to the people. They didn't want to give up. They didn't want to surrender. Even the little girl, all of them. So Churchill found his voice. And he went back to Parliament and he gave his famous fight on the beaches, never surrender. And the Parliament rose up, waving their little handkerchiefs like they do. And that was the end of the movie and the end of the darkest hour because we know how it ended. We know how it ended. So anyway, thanks for dropping in and uh, see you in the movies. <laughs> no, get that click there.